Welcome back to today's video. This week we're going to be having a look at the Siemens TON timer and how we can use that to create things like the TP and the TOF. If you remember from our previous video, we showed you how the TP timer works and how the TOF timer works. If you haven't seen that video, go back to our channel and check that out. Now before we get started, don't forget to hit the like button. It helps us out a hell of a lot comment below on what you'd like to see next and don't forget to subscribe either so you can stay up to date with new videos. Right, let's dive into it. So in our previous video, like I say, we looked at the TP timer and we also looked at the TOF timer over here. And I mentioned that in other PLCs, we might not have the TP and the TOF. So how could we create these timers if we didn't have them available? Well, most PLCs, or pretty much all PLCs have the TON timer. So our solution involves that TON timer. And what we can do is then just use standard bit logic, standard contacts and coils to then do the rest for us. So what we're gonna have a look at is first of all, the TP timer. And if you remember from last week, the TP timer works in a way that when the process turns on, it triggers our siren for however long we've set our timer to. It simply just pulses an output on for a set period of time when the process turns on and then turns the output off again, creating a pulse on the output. To create that using an on-delay timer, we just use standard bit logic to do this. So here, for example, let's change this to a TON, okay? So if we think about how this works, when the process turns on, we want to run a delay and turn off the output. Whereas with the TON, when the process turns on, it's gonna wait and then turn on the output. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna simply branch down, move the siren below, and what we'll do is we'll place a normally closed contact from the data block of the timer dot Q. So that there is the output, this Q line of the timer. When that turns on after 10 seconds, it'll then open and turn off our siren. So we just use standard bit logic, standard contacts and coils to run that. So let's save our project now, download that to the PLC and test it out. Right, let's go online. So remember how it works, we turn the process on and the siren turns on. After 10 seconds, the siren turns off. So when we trigger the process, the siren turns on and this timer begins to run. After 10 seconds, the queue of this timer is then gonna turn on, this contact will open, turning the siren off. And that there is our timer pulse. So if we turn that back off again, it turns back off. Now, if you actually think about the timer pulse in TIA, it only needed the signal to be on for one PLC scan. It didn't require this input signal to be on at all times. So for example, when I press this button here and turn it on, if I was to turn this off at any point, the whole thing just turns off. Whereas with the TP and TIA portal, it stays on until it's finished. To do that, all we would do is simply create a latch. So if I take this network, if I just come offline here, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm then going to insert a new network just above network one. And, and I'm gonna take this M0.0, that's it. And I'm gonna have that trigger my latch. Let's make that M0.1 for example. Let's branch down here. Let's latch that on. M0.1, there we go. So when our process turns on, it's gonna latch on our M0.1 and our M0.1 is then gonna control this part of the process. To reset our latch from above, all we're gonna do is we're gonna use the queue once again from our timer. So let's save our work here. Let's download that to the PLC. Continue without sync, load that up. And 
and minimize that. Go online now. Minimize that. And now, when I turn on the process and then turn it back off again, it's still going to run until it's finished. And when it's finished, everything will reset back to zero. There we go. So to create the TP inside of Siemens, all we would do is just create a latch before this on delay, normally closed design below. That's the TP, nice and straightforward. The off delay becomes a little bit more harder to work with. The off delay, when the process turns on, turns on the output. When the process turns off, the output remains on until the timer's finished. So we have to think about how we can do this. Now, in my mind, the way I'm thinking of this is we need to have some sort of control when the process turns off. Now, we can actually detect when the process turns off via bit logic. Once again, we can use the negative falling edge of our process. So let's just go offline first of all and let's just delete that network there let's just delete that network there and let's place in a normally open contact to our m0.0 .0, our process run then what we're going to do is we're going to have this trigger on the negative falling edge i need to assign a storage bit to it i'll just assign again m0.1 for example and what we're going to do here is we're going to latch on a bit m0.2 And this is going to be our signal to tell us the process has turned off, which is going to be that uh, enable signal for our timer effectively. So let's rename this to process off, for example. Change that to a non-capitalized F. There we go. We need to reset this latch, but I'll come up to that later on. So when the process run turns off, our process is off, and that will then latch on. Now what we do is on our next network, we need to again control this via our process run signal. So when the process is running, we want to turn on our extraction fan, Q0.0. So we'll change that to our extraction fan. There we go. So now what I need to do is when the process turns off, that means that this contact is also turned off. We need to keep this extraction fan running. So how can we do that? Well, what we can do is we can branch down from here and we can place in here M0.2 and branch that up to this chap over here. Right, so that process off signal now keeps our, our extraction fan on. Now what we need to do as well is when the process does turn off, that signal being on, we then want to run a delay for 10 seconds. So again, we can branch down from here, grab our TON and drop that into place over here. Say OK to that and set that to 10 seconds. So when the process run turns off, M0.2 latches on and this timer begins to run. After 10 seconds, the Q signal will then turn on and we can use that to then reset our latch. So IEC timer, DB2, Q. And what I'll do is I'll place that timer after the reset, just so it looks a little bit neater, a little bit easier to work out how it's running. And that's the off delay timer. So let's save that design. Let's download that to the PLC and let's test it out. Let's go online. Let's minimize all the networks. Sorry, let's minimize all these little boxes at the bottom. All right. So, when the process run turns on, the extraction fan turns on. When the process run turns off, our extraction fan stays on for 10 seconds. Let's see if this works. 
right click the contact, modify to one. Our extraction fan is currently on, which is what we should be seeing. At the moment, nothing is running, which is exactly how that TOF runs. It only kicks into gear when the process turns off. So when I unlatch or reset our process run, it'll detect the negative falling edge via the storage bit over here, and it will latch on our process off, which will continue holding the extraction fan on, and then it will run this timer. After 10 seconds, everything will turn off, including our extraction fan. So let's turn off the process run, modify it to zero, and there we go. Extraction fan is still on. Our timer is currently running. 10 seconds later, the queue will turn on, resetting that network. Everything now turns back off, and we can run it once again without any worries. There we go. That there is our off delay timer using the TON timer. So if you're working with a PLC that doesn't have all these other timers like Siemens does and, or like Alan Bradley does, you can simply just use these TONs and you just use standard bit logic to work around it. There's always workarounds, but try to keep it as simple as possible. Don't go too in depth with the design. Try to keep it as simple as possible from there. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. I look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to also subscribe too. I'll see you next time.